our speaker is a formal Yahoo executive. He is a New York Times best-selling author. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Tim Sanders. Well, good morning, or as I should say, aloha. I strongly believe, and have believed this for a few years, that the only reason to give a speech is to change the world. This is an old JFK idea. It's a hearty ambition, but I truly believe that, and in my life, I've learned that. In fact, about a decade ago, I was introduced to a man, the late, great Stanley Marcus Jr., and in 2002, what he taught me is he said, when things get tough, Tim, you have to make yourself, your culture, and your offering emotionally attractive. And I remember looking back at him and saying, Mr. Marcus, you're just out of touch. No offense, but times are tough. We have to make it financially attractive. He says, no, you've always been financially attractive. That's getting ready to be a commodity. He said, when times are tough, people are stressed and they look for rewards. They look for emotional rewards. And he said, I'll tell it to you one more time. Culturally, as a leader, if you want to succeed, you need to make yourself emotionally attractive. But he taught me three things are important to be successful. The first thing he taught me is that you have to build a culture. Not a set of policies. Not a set of arguments. Not a set of price, it's a, got a culture. And it's a culture that cares about the customer and gives employees during times of crisis a purpose that keeps them motivated, keeps them productive, and allows you to squeeze a whole lot more out of them over the course of time. Well, the, the second thing he taught me is that during tough times, we've got to learn to be Walt Disney and focus on the customer experience and let our other competitors focus on service levels. The final thing he taught me is that we have to inject purpose into our work culture so our people feel like they're making a difference, not just a dollar. It's all interesting. Let me go back and talk about the first point, culture. As leaders, down to property ownership, what you do is you establish a local culture. I've learned in working with very powerful brands that brands are built one property at a time one store location at a time, and that cultures vary wildly. That's why every one of you make a powerful difference to this brand. But a culture, this is the other powerful learning I got from Mr. Marcus, a culture is a set of beliefs and values properly communicated to the staff that creates an intuition when you're not around. Let me say it again. When you've got a strong culture at your property, what you've done is you've effectively communicated to your staff your beliefs as a leader, what you value as a leader, and you've instilled that so strongly in them, they know exactly what to do. In a particular customer situation, they don't have to ask you. You don't have to look over their shoulder. They know exactly what to do. That's when you have a strong culture. A weak culture is when they just protect themselves. Call it the CYA culture, the default culture. They just look out for themselves. If you're around, they're fantastic. If you're not around, well, they just say tough luck. And that's a broken culture. So one of the most important things we must do is during these times, we have to communicate what we believe in. That we believe in customer care, right? We believe in the quality of the experience. We believe in the integrity of the pro you know, what we're doing. And we've got to find ways to communicate that. 